students have begun camping outside the Carrier Dome ahead of Wednesday's basketball game against Duke. We'll tell you what motivates them to brave the cold. The Student Association Judicial Review Board has formally outlined the charges against President Eric Evangelista, what that means for SA for the rest of the year. A lot of sun and warmer temperatures. I'll tell you if it's going to continually get warmer or get colder again in my full weather forecast. Your campus news leader, Citrus TV, starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. As Marshall Street prepares for major changes, violence erupted early Sunday morning. I'm Brooke Glatz. And I'm Alex Amico. Syracuse Police and the Department of Public Safety are investigating a triple shooting on the corner of Marshall and University Avenue around 2 a.m. Sunday. Citrus TV reporter Rob Romano will come later on the show, and we will have more details on that later. The Syracuse Students Association will be hosting an open forum tonight at 7.30 in Maxwell Auditorium. SA will be discussing current initiatives, future plans, and overall goals during the event. Student protesters are expected to be at the meeting in support of making Syracuse University a sanctuary campus. Both Chancellor Kent Sieverud and the Dean of Student Affairs, Rebecca Reed Kantorowicz, are also expected to attend. The meeting comes after a month of investigating and contemplating the fate of SA President Eric Evangelista. Citrus TV's Zach Levine has more on the decision made last week. The Review Board has formally outlined the charges against embattled Student Association President Eric Evangelista. Matthew Vandenbark, the chair of the Judicial Review Board, spent over an hour describing charges and investigation process in depth, highlighting three violations of the SA Constitution that were in question. The first violation addressed Evangelista's nomination of Nicole Sherwood for Public Relations Co-Chair. Evangelista had failed to send out an email to the entire student population, which would have allowed any student to apply for the open position. The second violation in question was that after Evangelista was notified of his violation, he intended to forward it to SA Assembly and Cabinet members, but accidentally sent it to the entire undergraduate student body. The third violation in question was that Evangelista misinformed the SA Assembly on the SA Vice President's role in the nomination process of Sherwood and falsely claimed that Sherwood was already one of the PR chairs. Evangelista was found guilty of the last two violations. There were three sanctions put on Evangelista's powers. The first disables him from using the campus-wide email listserv without two-thirds vote from the SA cabinet. The second sanction restricts the SA president's ability to select cabinet members. And the final sanction disables Evangelista from meeting with university officials and administrators without the company of other high-ranking SA members. If Evangelista violates any of the terms in the contract, he will be expelled from his position immediately. Now, the JRB did indeed come to a decision on Monday, but Evangelista wanted to reach out to some personal contacts and let them know of the decision before the general public. Evangelista has until this Friday to file an appeal. Reporting from the Student Association, Zachary Levine, Citrus TV News. There are only two weeks left in the regular season for basketball before the ACC tournament, and with the Duke game on Wednesday night, students have already started setting up their tents to ensure they have a front row seat to the action. Citrus TV reporter Rebecca Castor was at the Dome last night to meet the students who braved the cold to be first in line for the men's game. Camping out at the Carrier Dome for the Syracuse versus Duke basketball game has been a long-held tradition here at Syracuse University, a tradition these SU students could not miss out on. What made you guys want to camp out for the Duke game? So we had a really big group of friends that go to the games all the time. We're all season ticket holders as students. And we really, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to do this last year. There was no camping out. There wasn't a Duke game home or whatnot. So we really wanted to take advantage of this opportunity. A lot of us, it's our last opportunity to do this. So we definitely wanted to take advantage of it. Students were allowed to start setting up tents after the women's basketball game Sunday night. And even though only a few tents were set up, Austin, a member of Otto's Army, believes more will come. So far, it looks pretty promising. Like, we already have about seven groups, and we just started about... 30 minutes ago so I'm hoping and we have like three more days so I'm hoping it should be pretty good. Students are allowed to camp out in groups and one member of each group must be present at the tent at all times. It seems pretty cool right now the environment right now is really awesome uh, you know setting up everybody initially here so we'll see as it goes on but it seems like it's gonna be a good time. Do you have any concerns? No, I'm just hoping we stay warm. We got a lot of blankets. We got more sleeping bags coming and more uh, air mattresses. So I think we're going to be all set. 
Students can only enter the dome one at a time to use the restroom. And DPS plans to make frequent drop-bys to ensure everyone's staying safe. Reporting from the dome for Citrus TV News, I'm Rebecca Castor. Dollar Day returns to the Dome for the Duke game, benefiting the United Way. Fans can make a cash donation outside the Dome or buy an SU rally towel for $5. All donations will be going toward the 91 local programs and services the United Way of Central New York funds. This is the 45th year SU employees have conducted fundraising for the United Way. We've had warmer than te uh, usual temperatures and a lot of sun this weekend. The Citrus Can was outside Hendricks Chapel earlier today, where last week's snow has almost completely melted away. Anchor David Edelstein is in studio. David, will the spring-like weather stick around or be more snow on the way? Well, it definitely has been warmer out these past few days. As the weekend started, the snow kind of melted away. Uh, you saw it on the roads with all of the water going into the drain, and now, really, it's spring weather. But um, as we talk about the next few uh, days for weather, it's definitely going to be uh, intermediate clouds coming in and out. A lot of sunshine, though, still out. Um, tomorrow if, uh, in the afternoon, we will have some rain. But after that, we can see uh, throughout the next few days. In between, you will have a lot of clouds, a lot of sun. You'll still need your sunglasses. Definitely weather our temperatures are getting higher with uh, 60 degrees coming up in the next few days. So we're going to be enjoying that if you are a web, uh, summer person. All right, thank you. Coming up, Uber has launched an investigation into sexism within the community. We'll tell you what measures are being taken. And Vice President Mike Pence continued his trip to Europe today. We'll tell you who he met with to discuss national security. Hey, look, it's those guys. Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. You're watching Citrus TV News with Alex Amico, Brooke Glatz, and Rebecca Castor with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. Russian officials say its ambassador to the UN has unexpectedly died in New York City. Vitaly Cherkin became sick in his office at, the, at Russia's UN mission and was taken to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Cherkin was the Russian envoy uh, at the United Nations for over a decade and developed a reputation for his quick wit and stinging remarks against the West. His cause of death has not been released. Cherkin was 64. 
And demonstrators are taking to the streets nationwide in protest of President Trump. This was the scene earlier today in New York for the Not My President Day rally there. Similar protests took place in Los Angeles, Atlanta, Chicago, and other cities. Organizers say the rally is intended to send a message to Trump that many people oppose his policies and executive orders, as well as an attempt to keep the momentum going between last month's Women's March and April's Tax Day March. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence is in Brussels today to meet with European Union and NATO officials. He's hoping to re reassure European allies who are worried about the direction of the U.S. foreign policy under President Donald Trump. Pence spoke at the Munich Security Conference over the weekend and said the U.S. supports NATO and stands with Europe. Uber could soon be coming to central New York, but in the meantime, they have some problems to deal with. Uber's CEO has ordered urgent investigations into allegations of sexual harassment by a former employee. In a blog post, the ex-worker says she and other women complained about advances by a male supervisor, but she says the supervisor got away with a warning. Susan Fowler also claimed she faced gender discrimination at Uber, but she was threatened with being fired. CEO Travis Kalanick said on Sunday that what Fowler described, quote, is abhorrent. One of the largest corporate merger proposals ever made is now off the table. The U.S. food giant Kraft Heinz made a takeover bid for the European company Unilever on Friday. But the two companies now say that Kraft Heinz has agreed to withdraw the proposal. The proposed $140 billion takeover would have been the largest in the food and beverage industry. Kraft Heinz is known for its mac and cheese and ketchup products. Unilever owns other big brands in the U.S. like Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream and Lipton Tea. Residents in San Antonio are surveying the damage after powerful storms struck the city Sunday night. The National Weather Service says at least 100 homes were damaged across the city by a combination of thunderstorms and powerful winds. The agency is investigating reports of a possible tornado hitting the San Antonio area Sunday evening. The heavy rain also led to flooding on area roads. CPS Energy says nearly 40,000 customers are without power in the area and around the city. The National Weather Service team spent today assessing the damage. And President Trump's campaign hats have officially entered the U.S. foreign policy. The U.S. ambassador to Somalia has given the country's newly elected president a cap with the slogan, Make Somalia Great Again. Somalia is one of the seven countries listed in President Trump's executive order, which banned citizens of those countries from entering the United States for 90 days. Somalian President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo came to the U.S. as a Somali embassy worker in the 1980s, was naturalized, and became a civil servant in Buffalo, New York. Amazon says it plans to hire more workers in Britain this year. The e-commerce giant says it's looking to hire 5,000 people in the UK for a variety of positions, including software developers, engineers, and technicians. Amazon already employs about 19,000 full-time workers in Britain. The announcement is the latest sign that tech firms plan to invest in the UK despite the country's exit from the European Union. Google and Facebook previously announced plans to open new offices in London. Expedia said today that it will hire more workers in the British capital. Changes are moving forward with the plans to build an eight-story building on South Krause Avenue. Current tenants are closing down before the building is demolished. Funkin' Waffles and Appetizing are the latest to announce the closing dates. Citrus TV reporter Chris Venzen joins us live from outside the restaurants. Chris? Thank you, guys. Alex, so much. Uh, if you have graduated from Syracuse University in the past year or so, you might return this spring to find Marshall Street and South Krause Avenue radically different. If you'll remember, the Syracuse Planning Committee okayed Boulevard Equities to bulldoze this entire complex. And yet, you know, there's so many local favorites here. Hungry Chuck's Cafe, Funkin' Waffles, Appetizing, Roly Poly, the Sandwich Shop. All favorites visited by students, celebrities throughout the years. Uh, Funkin' Waffles, notably, they just one of my favorites. Love their chicken and waffles. They came and they announced that they were closing on Wednesday. Appetizing down the street announced they would be closing this Friday. A statement released by Funkin' Waffles owners. They were thanking all of the people that have come and visited their restaurant over the years. They said, thank you to all of our customers throughout the years. We had the pleasure of serving you and celebrities as they came to town and musicians of all skill sets that took the stage. We opened our doors wide in January 2007 and prepared to receive whatever and whomever would decide to come inside and create with us. Guys, this is a iconic area right in this alleyway just off of South Krauss Avenue and it's going to be demolished and turned into a complex, an apartment complex with multiple facilities. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot of change right here happening in Syracuse University. The question is whether this is a uh, question of economic development or economic stagnation. For Citrus TV, I'm Chris Venzen reporting live right here along South Krauss Avenue. 
After the break, we have a recap of a panel for women who want to work in sports and what advice professionals have for students. And later, Matt Wieselthier joins us with highlights of the Syracuse men's lacrosse first game against a ranked opponent. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow. No. Snow-covered trees. Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, I am a witness and so are you. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off from school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Warmer temperatures outside, but right now as we come to the end of the day, the sun is still out. The days are getting longer, about 32 degrees, but cool. Let's take a look over here at our temperatures across the region. In the 30s, as you go to the west over here, a little bit higher temperatures, but still relatively cool as we get towards the night. Taking a look at this radar, you don't really see anything moving over the next few hours throughout tomorrow. That's because we're going to have clear skies, but let's take a look. There will be some clouds moving through the area, all coming through here. Tomorrow afternoon, we can possibly expect some afternoon showers. That's what's going to come from the clouds besides some shade at other times. The rest of the time, it will be nice and sunny for those of us who like our vitamin D. All right, tomorrow, 45 degrees, another clear day. It is getting warmer, and again, the clouds will be moving through the area. And then when you wake up, though, to expect when you're getting outside, it will feel like 19 degrees. Really, it will be 25. So although it is getting warmer still, it is still winter, still cold outside. Sun rises at 7 a.m. Throughout the day, the temperatures are going to increasingly get warmer. We're working up to 60 degrees midway through the week. Tomorrow, though, 9 a.m. 30, noon 41, and at 6 p.m. 43 degrees. Uh, as we look now, chance of precipitation, a storm is going to move in not only tomorrow afternoon, but into the rest of the week towards the weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the precipitation is going to be uh, where the storm is coming in. And so as we take a look at that five-day forecast, you could see Tuesday through Thursday really warm and sunny. And then Friday over here, very warm still and thunderstorms, one of the first. And then it will be rainy for the weekend, um, but still not cold. It's not snow. It's definitely rain instead. You said the next couple of days are going to be a little bit warmer, a lot warmer. Is this it for winter weather the rest of the year? Uh, it might get a little bit colder, but really as of the end of this past week into this weekend, it has gotten warmer, and I think that we'll stay around 40 degrees or higher for the rest of the year. All, All right. right. Thank you so much, David. The Great Wall couldn't build any enthusiasm at the box office this weekend. The movie China hoped would help motivate it and move it into the big-time Hollywood didn't live up to expectations. 
although it had a budget of $150 million and made $171 million in China, the U.S. numbers were weak. The movie took in only $18.1 million in its President's Day weekend debut that left it in third place behind the Lego Batman movie, which took $34.2 million in its second weekend in theaters and Fifty Shades Darker that sold $21 million in tickets. Some high-profile women in the sports industry came to Syracuse for a panel discussion hosted by the local chapter of Women in Sports and Events. Citrus TV reporter James Groh was there to capture the sights and sounds. Syracuse chapter of Women in Sports and Events hosted a discussion panel for women who want to work in sports. Women in Sports and Events are WISE is an organization that promotes women working in the sport and entertainment world. The topic of this panel was how women can succeed in the sports business. So panel members discussed what it's like for women to climb the corporate ladder and the keys to success. But the president of WISE, Paige Sarah, said that she hopes one message in particular resonates with those who attended. And I really hope that people take away that, you know, women can be in the sports industry. And as much of hard work as it is, it really is kind of glamorous. This is a sentiment that all panelists echoed during their hour-long conversation. The speakers had a wide range of sport industry experience, too, from the first woman to call a college football game to the director of business operations for women's basketball at the NCAA. The event was held just before an SU women's basketball game. Was it a coincidence? Not entirely. Paige said that the event was designed to show how women can ball just as well as the men. It definitely means that we, we can hang in there with the guys. We can do it you know, our way, and we can probably do it better sometimes. Um, after the discussion ended, a networking session began. And it wasn't just students trying to land summer internships. Some were even Syracuse professors pitching business ideas. In the end, Sarah says she hopes the women who attended feel inspired and uninhibited from pursuing their dream of working in the sports industry. And I really hope we inspired some girls in the audience to participate in sports like that. James Grow, Citrus TV News. Well, coming up, my mom always told me that the end of the game for every sport is always the best. Well, Syracuse, they really took that motto to heart, and they ran with it all weekend. Could the Orange create some last-minute magic? Stay tuned to find out. Got a quarter? Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome back. I'm Matthew Weasel Thayer. Jim Beheim certainly loves to give Orange fans heart attacks. The past five games have required double-digit comebacks for Syracuse to even be in the end of games at the, for the Orange. And the great rallies haven't exactly all ended in wins for SU. 
which is not a great sign for a team that needs to build up his resume. Now on a two-game skid, Syracuse headed down to Georgia Tech looking not to get stung by the Yellow Jackets. And for the Orange, it really took a lot of effort, especially from all the, the supporting cast. You look on early, it's the freshman connection. Tyus Battle finds Torian Thompson gives Syracuse an early 9-7 lead. Oh, the freshman could do it. Why not the sophomores? Tyler Lydon finds Frank Howard, who drives and gets the end one. Syracuse with time running out in the first half, up nine. What is this? Syracuse up near the end of half? Not so fast. Georgia Tech would go on a quick late end of half run, and Tedrick J Jackson hit the three as the buzzer went off. Georgia Tech only down three going into the half, and then Ben Lammers, the star for Georgia Tech, a jumper there. And when you're good at something, well, you should probably keep doing that. Ben Lammers again nails the jumper. Georgia Tech up 13 near the middle of the second half. Skip to the end. Syracuse making another comeback. John Gillen drives into the lane, unable to get the layup. He's been clutch all season for the Orange, though. Find him back in the corner. Why not? Three-pointer, bang, nails it. 67-64, Georgia Tech. Well, John Gillen again trying to make some magic out of nothing. Tyler Roberson gets the foul. That would end the game for Syracuse. It was only down two at that point. 71-65, the Orange fall to Georgia Tech. And Coach's Q squad doesn't exactly have the same resume issues. Ranked 21st in the country, the Orange already seem to have their tournament spot clinched. With a great team comes some great hype. A record crowd in the Dome yesterday as Syracuse hosted number 7 Notre Dame. Over 11,000 fans surrounded the court. Energy surrounded the hardwood, but it would not be enough for the Orange to pull the upset at home. Syracuse falling 85-80 to 80 to the number seven team in the country. Main reason for that was, was certainly Brianna Turner for Notre Dame. 31 points and nine rebounds, unable to be countered by Syracuse's star Alexis Peterson at 19 points and 14 assists. Not easy for the Orange to lose that one. And the weather outside may say it's freezing in winter, but the seasons have changed. It's lacrosse season in Syracuse. After an easy dispatching of Siena last week, SU faced his first test of the year, number 12 Albany in the Dome. And the rematch of last year's NCAA tournament matchup wouldn't disappoint. It all started with the captain, Sergio Salcino, no goals in his first game against Siena. Well, it started off easy for Albany right off the faceoff. It's Troy Ray getting the goal, putting Albany up early 4-1. to one. Pat Carlin not having much of that. Throws it in the back of the net near the end of the second half. Sorry, the first half, excuse me. 6-3 lead for Albany heading into halftime. Let's head to the fourth quarter. Syracuse would be able to get a lead, but Sean Eccles ties the game at 7 in the middle of the fourth quarter. We're going down to the, the finish. I told you, Sergio Salcido, no goals in the game against Siena. Yeah, how about this one? Rips it into the back le top left-hand corner of the net. 9-8 Syracuse lead. Sean Eccles has the response. Gets it past Evan Malloy. And then it's down to the freshman, sorry, the sophomore now, Nate Solomon, finds the senior, Nick Mariano, for the game-winning goal with 1.6 seconds left. Syracuse wins 10-9. to Absolutely phenomenal for the Arch. Well, thanks, Matt. Citrus TV News will be back in 60 seconds. My big man fingers are having a problem with these little tiny buttons. Whoa, watch it there. Your blood pressure is going to go through the roof. Tell me about it. I'm trying to learn how to get it down. Instead, it keeps going up. High blood pressure can increase the risk for heart attack or stroke. Learn how to keep yours at a healthy range. Ever hear a voice command? Just say, text Barbershop to 97779. That's not what I said. Just give me that. Now my blood pressure's up. Oof. Fancy Pants Peanut Butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. If you see news happening on campus, Syracuse or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. For those tired of having to take out their phone in order to take a Snapchat, a, well, a new alternative is on the market. Snapchat Spectacles can now be purchased online at spectacles.com for $130. Snaps can be filmed with the touch of a button and are saved under the user's Snapchat app. The sunglasses launched last November, but were only available in certain vending machines called SnapBots. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Brooke Glatz. And I'm Alex Amico. Have a great night, Syracuse.